everybody, I don't know if you understand. There's meaningful games being played. Oh, wait. No, no meaningful games yet. No. Meaningful games are going to be played. Yep. And we're actually going to tell you, we're going to don the cap of a Buckeye. It's really smelly. Ooh. It's really moldy. It's it's okay. reeks of 1988 IROC Camaro. It's very yep. weird in there. Yep. We're going to don the cap of a Buckeye and tell you how to attack this Georgia team from two insiders next on Locked On Bulldogs. You are Locked On Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? I don't care what Clint says. We are not insiders or gurus. We're just <laughs> Georgia fans. This is the Lockdown Bulldogs podcast. That's what it's all about. It's about being a Georgia mm-hmm. fan. We're That's so right. glad that you're here. If you found us over on the YouTube channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button, hit that bell, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment. And also, if you're here watching the video on YouTube, Go subscribe to the audio podcast if you would. Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcast, just follow, subscribe, rate, and review over there. It helps us out a bunch. Uh, We really appreciate it. If you enjoy the show, then uh, make sure you're subscribed both places. Clint, um, we're going to channel our inner Buckeye today. That's what we're going to do. Fair and balanced analysis is what we're here to do. If I know anything about Ohio State Buckeye fan. They're yeah. reasonable. Oh, that's right. They have very clear expectations. Very clear expectations. They and only care about analysis and not being a fan. When you're from the Midwest, Daniel, I look, I live close to these people. Please educate me. I'm going to try to educate you. Please Midwest do. people, they they live with, with taking the trash right up the brownstone quite yep. a bit. Yeah. But it just kind of stays there. Right it just when they take lodged, the trash out, and it gets right lodged out of the brownstone. Yeah, they're trying to take the trash out, and they don't know how to be fun or how to have fun or how to have successful. This is why they talk about integrity and the chancellor of integrity on a yacht somewhere. Sure, on a yacht, kicking people while they're laying on the ground. That's why they talk know. about that. Okay, so we're Ohio State fans, which Oof. means Michigan owns us, and we haven't beaten them in. Jim Harbaugh's my daddy. That's correct. You know. Quarter of a decade it's been since we've beaten them, but that's fine. Uh, Let's talk about how Ohio State can attack this Georgia defense. In all seriousness, um, this is a good matchup. This is a these are the I believe that these are the two most talented teams in the college football playoff. Yes, I believe that that if these teams weren't playing each other, they would meet for the national championship. Clint. That's my. I, that is my. I think my that belief. they would beat Michigan again on on a if you rematch. got that rematch. I think that they would yep. not absolutely defecate the bed the way that they did at home in front of, um, in the horseshoe, um, and so I think that Ohio State would play Georgia in the national championship. But we're getting that championship caliber matchup mm-hmm. in round, round one. one of the playoff, and a lot of talent on Ohio State's roster. Obviously, let's talk about. The offensive side of the ball specifically, though, because there is a lot of talent on the offensive side of the ball. Lots. Um, Where does Ohio State go, in your mind, right off the bat, to attack this Georgia defense? Where are the perceived weaknesses? Can Ohio State run the ball on Georgia? They do have talented backs. They do. Can Ohio State beat Georgia over the top? They do have talented wide receivers. Obviously, a Heisman Trophy finalist at quarterback. So where does Ohio State go in order to make hay on offense, Clint? Uh, look, here you may think Ohio State. Like You may think to yourself, you have your number one back. He's not playing in this game. Okay. Yeah. He, he, he gone. He's injured. I, I don't know what. Or, I'm sorry, R. Number one back, we're, we're yes, we're now like, Ohio State. Fans. Sorry, we're right. we're now Ohio State. Which, so. by the way, we're going to talk to our 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 buddy from Locked On Buckeyes, but but in speaking with him earlier, this he has been on the bandwagon that uh, Henderson not the number one back. So he not doesn't think Drayon ba- Henderson, who's out, is not who does he say is the number he one? He says back? the other guy is better. 
He says really? our other tailback is better, and if he's going to only get one of them, that that's the guy that he wants. Um, and so it – That's fascinating I me. think there is a, at least a segment of – of us, now, Ohio State fans. Ohio State fans, because we're them. Who would um, who would say, not so fast, our number one back is not actually out. Mayan got, Williams? Is yeah, that the cat? We've got two great backs. Okay. One of them is out. Oh, oh no. One. I know what this guy's trying to say. I know what he's trying to say. Okay? This guy's bigger. He's he's a better running back, pure running back. Trevion Henderson is the home run threat. Daniel. Yeah. He's a guy that's going to stretch it. So if you're saying to yourself, the better, quote, running back, is this cat here the back you don't go 12 play drives against georgia that's what he's set up for so ohio state fan that we're embodying you're not going to grind out a 12 15 play drive we are not going to grind we are not a 12, going to do that play drive, so. and okay. even if we did one time do you know what's going to happen time two and three and four mm -hmm. if we tried to do that it's not going to succeed you have to establish the run certainly to try to keep them honest but the way in which you're going to win this game and is, we may hit a big run against georgia we may it's not like georgia hasn't no. given up runs this season look at it's mizzou not, it not, it's not like backs have not had some success against georgia no. this season there may be runs hit. I think what you're saying is over the course of a four quarter game, that's not how you're going to score 30 plus points and beat this Georgia team. No, it's that's not that what's going to butter our bread, so to speak. Daniel, yep. what is going to butter our bread is two things. Okay. Read option with CJ Stroud, mm -hmm. but he's he's not as excellent as other quarterbacks with that. He has the threat. It's there. Not as excellent. And then over the top streak routes outside vertical passing game. This is yeah. where you're successful. And this is if you're if if we want to succeed as Ohio State fans against mm -hmm. Georgia, it's gonna have to be getting in single man coverage, getting isolated, not having any safety over the top, hoping that our much maligned freshman or the, the other side's much maligned freshman all American bites mm -hmm. up on some play action, get a one on one with a DB and hit those big 40 yard chunk plays over the top Daniel that's that's it yeah I think you're gonna want to it's a, it's a it's an interesting dynamic because you let off by saying that you can't beat this Georgia team by going long extended drives right because eventually they are going to and we saw you know from Tennessee you, when you can't sustain a drive, your tempo is not going to work. Your tempo is not going to do anything. You're not going to be able to get those, those kind of hidden yards, those easy yards that you get. Quarterback run game is an interesting thought. It's not exactly like that C.J. Stroud's no. wheelhouse. Got, he's an athletic keep him guy. Got to keep him honest. He can run, but sure. that's not exactly what he's out there trying to do. But, but. We might want to run him a little bit if we're going to try to beat Georgia. But even though you can't sustain drives, Clint, against Georgia, you have got to be able to work underneath in order to draw the defenders closer to the line of scrimmage so that you can hit over the top. It's a Have bit to suck them in. Play action. It's a, yeah, and so you're, it's a bit of a double-edged sword if you're trying to attack this Georgia defense. You have to have just enough success doing the thing that's not going to win you the game, which is kind of short, dink and dunk stuff over the middle, running right. the ball between the tackles. That's that's not going to beat Georgia, but you've got to have enough success doing that that all of a sudden Kirby and Glenn Schumann and Will Muschamp say, we have got to get Chris Smith down nearer to the line of scrimmage because we're yep. giving up four or five yards of carry and we've got to put an end to that and now you've got a chance to get somebody over the top on keely ringo you get those chunk not a home run. i mean if you get a home run if we get a home run run of 35 40 yards great on the ground but uh six yards at a chunk those safeties start biting we bring in maybe bullard comes from the other side blitzes against us and now now we're really stew. now we, we spread them stew. out. There's a stew working over there. Even hit a little screen. Try to try to hit it where we predict where that mm -hmm. that uh, guy's coming off the edge and hit a screen to that side. Blit, you know, throw into the blitz, and that's where you get it. Uh, we're gonna come back after this as Ohio State Buckeye fans. That's right. And talk a little bit more, Daniel, mm -hmm. yeah, about how to beat this Georgia team. But first, 
I want to let you know about LinkedIn. Daniel, LinkedIn Please. is a fantastic place. Do you know about them at all? No, I know all about, as an Ohio State Buckeye fan, I know all about LinkedIn. Have you used them as Ohio State Buckeye fan? I was to recently fill any using your... them to see if I could fill a position, someone to beat Michigan, but they did not have any available positions. LinkedIn has got almost every job you could ever want. They were not able to help me find someone to beat Michigan. Okay. So I'm still well, searching. For we're that. still searching for that one. We, we are going it, to get down we to the bottom of that. We will find it this decade, probably. LinkedIn has over 800 million connections and network people all around the world. Find the right candidate for your job. Get applicants that you need for free right now. LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free to the right candidate, the right time that is right for your team. Uh, okay, Daniel, let's talk about – we've talked about how on offense we need to have them respect our run game. We need That's to right. push them around a little bit in the trenches. Mm -hmm. We stay away from 88. We double-team him, combo him. The rest of the D linemen, I'm heard, are nothing on Georgia. So it's going to be can't. very easy to they run up. They won't be able to stay with us. won't be able to stay with us. And yeah. our grinding back, who is better than Travion Henderson, as we've been told. That's and right. then we and then we hit him over the top. That's right. Okay. We hit now, him right over the top. Yep. Conversely, how do we uh -huh. stop – this, this is, very, very, very pedestrian offense for Georgia. Yeah, well, number one, you don't even really have to stop Georgia's offense because they don't have – they are incapable of making explosive plays. Okay. They've got the most average quarterback I've ever seen in my entire He's life. He's a walk-on. I don't know if you – did you know that he He's was a walk-on? He's got walk curly hair. He's short. He just – I don't know if he could even do anything if he wanted to. Um, Georgia doesn't have any wide receivers who no. are capable of making plays. And um, we defend the tight end really well. I don't know if you know that. And we have oh, played Ohio tight State, ends. Ohio State, we play We've the tight, played we, tight the best ends that are the best in the country. And so, um, yeah, it's interesting when you look at this. If you're Ohio State, how do you attack this Georgia defense? Or this Georgia offense? And... He, let's let's just say this we're trying to do something that no one else has been able to do this entire season mm -hmm. right we're mm -hmm. trying to beat the georgia bulldogs correct so if we're going to do something that no one else has done this entire season it stands to reason that we need to do that by being able to do something that no one else has been able to do against georgia this entire season right okay. we need to win in an area, in a way, that no one else has managed to be yes. able to, need to win. need to eclipse that Mount Summit, if That's you right. Will. And so the when you look at this Georgia offense, the most glaring thing where Ohio State has an opportunity to attempt to do something that no other team all season has been able to do against Georgia is we have to get pressure on mm. Stetson Bennett. Mm -hmm. We have got to get to the quarterback. I don't care if we have to bring four. I don't care if we have to bring five. I don't care if we have to bring six. We have got to find a way to get Stetson Bennett running for his life mm -hmm. and under pressure. Because right. what we've seen, not this year, not the better part of last year, but maybe a little bit early last year, what we've seen is that Sometimes when Stetson Bennett's under pressure, he makes poor decisions. Sometimes when Stetson Bennett's under pressure, he throws the ball into spaces that he shouldn't throw the ball in. Nobody's been able to pressure Georgia this year. Georgia's offensive line, I'm not sure if you know, is the best offensive line in the country. Second best. The best offensive line in the country. They're going Michigan. to be the second offensive line to beat the crap out of us, Ohio State. But they are the best of those two offensive lines that will beat that the you crap out that. of us. That's interesting. Um, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find a way to get through the best offensive line in the country. And when you look at defending the, the pass, Clint, when you look at – statistics offensive line statistics about quarterback pressures allowed about quarterback sacks allowed the this georgia def offensive line is so much uh, far and away above the michigan offensive line on in that area specifically that it's not even funny well, well daniel that's funny because michigan ran all over us with that less than better offensive well, they, line well they did they okay. did and we were not able to get 
to JJ <laughs> at all, who is, I guess, he's an elite quarterback, whereas Stetson Bennett is an average Pedestrian. quarterback. Right. So that was not that's not in our favor. What I'm saying yep. is is that we are gonna have to find a way to put pressure on the court. That's how yep. that's the recipe for slowing down this Georgia offense. Now look here here's what's unfortunate about uh, our defense and where our weaknesses as Ohio State Buckeyes come into play is that our cornerback play is not up to par of what it should be. Now we got JT on the defensive end. Uh, he should these linebackers pretty solid up the middle is solid, which is pretty why solid. as to your point, we have faced many tight ends and locked them down. So uh, up the middle, the gut of the defense, even the defensive tackle, we're just fine there, but it's on the outside that mm -hmm. we're really, really, so we got, you know, Jack, Sawyer over on the defensive end, doing great. JT doing great. Michael Hall, defensive tackle. These are all guys that are going to take care of that and are going to need to push back the middle of that pocket. Now, if I understand yeah. Georgia correctly, they get Stetson, the walk-on, mm -hmm. um, out on the edge quite a bit. There's some good movement. There's some play action uh, that mm -hmm. gets him out there. We need to limit the big plays. That's it. If we just limit the big plays, we take care of their tight ends. We've taken care of the best in the country so sure, far. That so Notre Dame kid, Notre Dame kid. Um, mm -hmm. I've forgotten his name already. Uh, it's not, he, it was so long ago that we beat them that, yeah. uh, it was a very long time ago. Meyer. is his name. Mayer. Sure. I, whatever. Uh, he didn't win an award. Um, no, so he didn't deserve an award. He didn't um, deserve an award. These two cats did deserve an award. They came in very close. One actually won the best tight end in the country. We lock him down. Our linebackers can take care of that. Our safeties can take care of that. They're now they they're playing down because their receivers aren't up to snuff. Well, they don't have any receivers. They have no That's receivers. That's the beauty. So for us. our weakness. So our is corners their weakness mitigated. Their our corners are going to be fine. So if you took that out, okay. So that equation is gone. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Our, our safeties and linebackers are better than Georgia's running backs and tight ends. That's win in our favor. Great. Now it's just getting pressure on mm -hmm. that, like you said, quarterback. And that is how Ohio State, we as Buckeyes are going to have to take on Georgia, yeah. is getting to that quarterback, making because they rely too much on explosive plays. They rely too much on little end arounds from Brock Bowers running around and, and doing just that kind cute of stuff. It's the cute stuff that they rely on. It's really because a Gus Malzahn type it's offense. Really, you think it about really it, looks like you UCF think about or it. Auburn. Yeah. If you understand, Mike Bobo, I hear, is probably mm -hmm. the better offensive coordinator in that he's room. He's mostly calling the plays. Yeah, Todd he's Mokin is a figurehead. Yeah. So, if, so you're a, if you're a school out there looking to hire a coach, yes. Don't. Mike Bobo is doing all the heavy lifting. You can offer him a job, I suppose. Please go ahead and offer him a job. Todd Monk and a figurehead. A figurehead. So mm -hmm. you're, you're right. Ohio State, we as uh, defending it, if we if we just take out those – and big plays happen from missed tackles. Uh, if you go back and look at the Michigan film, you take away all the big plays, all like 9, 10, 11 of them, Daniel. If you really – you remove mean in the those, first half, the 9, 10, 11 no, in the first? No, you remove those from the stat sheet. Okay. Our defense did we were pretty competitive. dang well. We were competitive. We were, if you remove those, we still would have lost, but we were competitive. No, we were it, and, at home. And that's what's going to – no, look. It, look, mm -hmm. things get weird into the season, injuries mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. um, all we have to do – Is it the beginning of the season now or is it still the <laughs> – Look. Look, Sorry. it's – it's hard to keep this it's going. Brutal. I am. I Listen, currently we need to get to the third segment because I can't do this any longer. This I, is. Just I currently a, am a fan of a team that has a coach uh -huh. that is on Fox, big noon nooner, mm -hmm. looking at interns with eyes I don't want to see. Possibly him at the softest with. college football team in America is the team I'm a fan of. USC called and they said we might be more physical than you. Basically, Daniel on defense, we are going to have to get a brand new identity. Yeah, when someone catches the ball, by the way, those corners are going to have to tackle them. How's that going to work? <laughs> well, our offense, C.J. Stroud, is really, Stroud. really, really going to keep us in this He's game, He's the Daniel. better quarterback. He's and, the better quarterback. And I know for a fact when Georgia goes up against a quarterback yeah. that's more physically talented than Stetson Bennett, the other team always wins. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Um, hey, Maybe you're thinking to yourself right now, that was the weirdest thing. And maybe you're thinking to yourself, How maybe I had... How many comments are we going to get <laughs> that don't understand sarcasm? Like, how many comments are we going to oh. get? People that literally just do not understand what sarcasm is. It's going to be quite a few. 
it won't just... be any loyal third segment listeners though no loyal third it. segment you guys you get it you understand but first national highway traffic safety administration wants to let you know that right now do not drink and drive do not drive buzz do not drive drive high do not drive impaired at all you will get pulled over you will get ticketed you will go to jail it's not worth your reputation your life it's not worth it at all all so stop doing it call and call any one of the car ride services get a ride from a friend sleep on the sidewalk better it is option better for you to do all that please as you celebrate celebrate responsibly do not drive drunk please drive only sober it's the only way to drive gosh can i stop okay i need to i need to yeah, do like let's a little, detox a little bit we need a detox let's detox loyal third bit. segment i look i did the best i could loyal third segment listeners <laughs> I did the best I could. I've been keeping my man at bay. But then something go. happened, Daniel. Mm, what happened? Tell me more. I, I turned into the game. You I cut clicked, the tape on. I cut and you the said, tape of this, this Mike I see? White led basketball team for Ooh. Georgia against Notre Dame. And and lo and behold, my eyes were not deceiving me as I saw the following inspired, uh-huh. energetic, mm-hmm coordinated Mm -hmm. well-coached team basketball that drubbed notre dame i mean took them to the woodshed clint drubbed that's a good that's a solid notre dame team now that's a that's a bubble team we were right in it with wake forest okay we did not beat uab who is another really good team and we should have beaten georgia tech that that loss is going to sit with me it's going to stick with me for a while it's a it's a the way that that game ended, we outplayed Georgia Tech on their home court. We should have won that game, but we didn't. Georgia doesn't have any catastrophic losses on the year. No. But but up until this point, we had not had any real quality wins at all either. But this is a neutral site game against a legitimate team, and they did not go squeak out a win, Clint. Georgia, as you said, came out and absolutely laid it to uh, Mike Bray and this Notre Dame team. This is a very talented, this is a Notre Dame team that's got to win over Michigan State already on its resume this yes, year. Sir. And so it shows me a few things. Number one, it shows me, well, number one, what it does is it makes, if, if Georgia goes out and takes care of business against Chattanooga on Wednesday and Ryder the following Wednesday, Georgia puts... 10 wins in the non-conference slate clint georgia won six games last year 10 wins in the non-conference slate 10 and 3 going into conference play so it sets that up and then the other thing it does is it tells me georgia's winning some of these conference games clint. yes sir georgia is not going to be at the at, at the cellar dweller of the sec this no. year They're going to put together some wins. Now, do I think they're going to finish top half of the SEC? No, I don't. Do I think they're going to compete or contend for even an NIT berth? No, ultimately, I don't. I think a a solid SEC season would be winning about a quarter of our conference games. I think if they win about a quarter of their conference slate, that would be a solid SEC season for this Georgia team. I don't. I don't necessarily think that they're going to finish the season even above 500 as far as record goes. But it's got to make you excited if you watch this Georgia team. And I want to talk about, I know I don't have much time because we only get one segment a year to talk about Georgia basketball. But I want to talk about Braylon Bridges because he deserves to be talked about. SEC Player of the Week. Um, so that's how a lot of you know that Georgia still has a basketball team is because it came across your timeline that Braylon Bridges won SEC Player of the Week. Congratulations on you saw him against that Georgia Tech game too. On, on learning that, uh, now listen, Braylon Bridges has done this before at Georgia. Yes, he's he's put out twenty earlier this year. He's put you know he's had over fifteen points many times last year. Um, but here's what I've never seen from Braylon okay. Bridges. I've seen uh, some some nice footwork around the basket. I've seen him finishing over both shoulders with both hands around the basket. He knows what to do when he gets the ball down low. But Braylon Bridges, if I m- could be honest, for his entire Georgia career, has uh-huh. been soft. 
Oh. He has been straight up soft on the defensive end. And so when he gets into conference play and he goes up against some of these these higher profile teams, he gets bullied on the defensive end of the court. He gets pushed around. He loses all of his energy. And I think that's why you saw Frank Anselm start to begin the season. Braylon Bridges was coming off the bench because I think Mike White got there and said, if you're going to play defense like that, you're not, you're not going to get very many minutes for me. And that's sort of, to your point, that's the vibe from this Georgia team. They're figuring out, especially some of these guys who were returning from last year, Braylon Bridges being kind of the most notable one, they're figuring out that I have to play defense in order to succeed. And when I do give effort on the defensive end, this team has a chance to be really solid because they're not a tremendous offensive team, but they do have guys. They do have guys like Terry Roberts who can go get his own shot, who can put the ball in the back basket. Kerry Oquindo, who can go get his own shot, put the ball yep. in the basket. Braylon yep. Bridges, who can go put the ball in the basket. They've got guys. And I can't, I don't think the impact of a guy like M.A. Moncrief. Like, how much did you love what you saw out of M.A. Moncrief in this Notre Dame game, Clint? Look, I can't I can't even begin to tell you the difference. You do apples and oranges when you talk about this team compared to last year, Daniel. And it's really a disservice, if I can be totally you honest with you. You can't compare these two teams. No, you, you can't. compare them. But when you look at this team, they are long. They and this is this is what frustrated me so much with Georgia in the past. You saw the ability there, you saw Quindo have the ability, but when they start being in the right position at the mm -hmm. right time, mm -hmm. so you, Moncrief is a great example. Every every game, it seems like somebody else of the six seven deep could be that guy yeah. to turn the corner in a game. So we're deep at that at I all mean, positions. Deep. I, this is a deep team, and with guys like Moncrief. It's just, it's just he's out there hustling, Clint. It's That's just I mean. a matter of he wants it more. He's out there working. And when you put a guy like that next to Braylon Bridges on the defensive end, there's no option for Braylon Bridges to be soft anymore because yes. his teammates aren't going to allow that. Yes. His coaching staff is not going to allow that. No, not at all. So, there are times that you could try to out-scheme. And on a football team, you get Jalen Carter uh, – outside on on right ahead of you and just one-on-one -on -one, you're whipped so you can out scheme around that basketball court five guys if you can hustle if you could buy in if you can mm -hmm. get with the system and understand your role in it you have a chance to excel not just do excel and that's what he was and exactly what you said the temperature of the team rises with each and every passing i saw guys you talk about getting their own shot i saw crisp shooting mm -hmm. i saw crisp passing yeah. I saw fundamental basketball that then once that stands there, you said this SEC, SEC slate, who knows, maybe won't get that many wins. But Daniel, think about this. Th this is how basketball, you get these fundamentals, you get these easy understandings in your winning games. Now all of a sudden add on top of that athletic prowess mm -hmm. to these and you got a whole different thing cooking. So I'm looking at the schedule and I'm thinking to myself, Kentucky ain't that good of a team this year. There's no, there are no... I mean, there's some very good SEC teams, okay? Don't get me wrong. There are some very good SEC teams. <laughs> Bama looks real good. This Alabama's year. very good. Arkansas Ooh. is very good. Tennessee is very good. Mississippi State is pretty dang good. There's a lot of very good SEC teams. But there are a lot. But And so I'm not saying that Georgia could beat those teams necessarily. No. But there are not that many teams that if they come into the stag, I don't feel like Georgia has a chance to beat them. Last year, Georgia was just taking L's before they got off the bus. I'm but. looking at lines, Daniel. Every basketball game with this Georgia team, I'm looking at points. And that wasn't happening last year. This year, I'm thinking, oh, we you're giving me six? I'll, I'll take that all day, Notre Dame. Yeah, I think this Georgia team is still ascending. And that's yes. the exciting thing yes. right now. Again, it's not necessarily about what happens this season with this Georgia team. Because I'll just leave you with this, that in case this is the last time I ever get to talk about Georgia basketball. 
I'll just leave you with go and look at who still has eligibility mm. after this year. Mm. Keep in mind the COVID year when everyone gets another year of eligibility. So e everyone on this everyone. roster gets at least five years of eligibility. So go start doing that math. Mm -hmm. Go start looking at the guys that still have eligibility. Because let me just spoil it for you. It's dang near every single one of the contributing players on this team. Oh, and by the way, the recruiting class coming in next year is going to just keep adding talent. And so as Mike White get, gets guys to buy in and gets them to fit the culture and gets them to stay – and then we're bringing it guys in from the portal. We're bringing guys in through recruiting. Guys like Kyron Lindsay are continuing to develop and get better. This, the arrow is pointed up for Georgia basketball. And that's all you can ask. That's all you can ask. Under Tom Crean, the development was not there. We could get guys, but they were not. This is development all day long. Does, he, does Mike White get a win against Florida? Does he, does he get the if win? He against goes his down on January the 7th mm -hmm. to Gainesville. Mm-hmm. And he wins in the O-Dome in Gainesville, Florida. I might get Mike White's name tattooed across my face. Like, we are talking about an absolute legendary move by Mike White. If that ha Like, there, he's going to get booed so hard in so that hard. game. Um, but uh, Florida is a very... Very beatable team for Georgia. So, yes, sir. A road game. I mean, it's a tough way to start conference play. You get Auburn at home. Auburn's a good team, and then you have to go on the road to Florida, and then you got Mississippi State right after. That. Like, it's a tough start to conference play. But I'll say this: any of those first three games, if Mike White gets a win in those first three games, I think the sky's the limit in conference play. Uh, because you get one of those one of those two ranked teams, or you get Florida on the road. Um, he'll get a win against Florida. It may not be at Florida, but we'll beat Florida at home. This Ooh. Year. We'll beat Florida at home. Uh, this has been Locked On Bulldogs, part of Locked On Podcast family, your team every day. Check back. Hey, loyal third segment. You heard it here first. We got a special guest tomorrow, Daniel. Oh, a special guest coming on the pod. He's well, probably not anybody I've ever heard of, though, right? What if I was to tell you one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time at UGA? That is, oh, that's right. Oh, interesting. Come Aaron on the pod tomorrow. Murray, going to okay. be there. All right. So well, we'll see you then. Then come on back for then. We'll see you guys later.